Welcome to Bible Preacher on the Passion Prevails Entertainment Channel. I will be your main Bible preacher. My name is Dayon Stanojevic. I do plan on featuring other Bible preachers, but for now, it will just be me. And as always, click under videos, playlists, and follow the playlists because there are tons of Bible videos coming. This is an introduction video as to explain why you should listen to me and my Bible preaching. I grew up in Los Angeles and I grew up a Christian Orthodox because my parents are from Serbia and my mother took us to the Christian Orthodox Church. I always saw this book in the church and everywhere else and I never touched it until the age of 35 and I am now 47 years old. So it took me 12 months to read it and I read it every day and I, and I nailed it. You can see all of this is highlighted. I have no cards stacked here. I have outlines written there. So I have a ton, a ton, a ton of information to give you. I always thought, what is that book? What is inside that book? Is it hard to read? Do you need a college degree? Do I need someone to tell me that I can read the book? Do I have to be a theologian? Do I have to be a PhD? And the answers to all those questions are no. And I'm going to give you three scriptures in a few minutes explaining why you don't need any other man on this planet to tell you to preach the Bible. You can preach it on your own. Here is a look at my college degree, okay, which took four years, Cal State Fullerton, Orange County, California. I have a degree in, what is this? Speech communications. This is nothing compared to this. Nothing. This is toilet paper compared to this. This is more education than this. But of course, I also have a paralegaling certificate from UCLA. I have a real estate sales license. I have a real estate appraising license. I have a notary commission and I've read over 20 books on the stock market and I trade stocks. And you can see my stock videos where I am risky trader. All of that knowledge is nothing compared to this. And you will see in the videos how I explain that. But I will briefly say now that this explains human thinking. It explains man and woman. It explains greed, arrogance, egotism, vanity, greed, wars, killings. Why do we do all these things? Why do humans do all these things? Because of these things that the Bible warns about. Why, why am I qualified to preach the Bible? Why do I feel qualified to preach the Bible? And what will make you qualified to preach the Bible? It's not any man. It's not a degree. It's not a theology school. It's not any of these things. So what is it? Here are three verses that say you are qualified to preach the Bible. And so am I qualified to preach the Bible? The first verse is John 1930. So when Jesus was on the cross and before he died, he bowed his head and gave up the ghost. Ghost also refers to as the spirit. So both words can be interchanged. Some Bibles say spirit, some say ghost. So when we say the Father, the Son, 
and the Holy Spirit or the Holy Ghost, Jesus died and gave up the ghost for you to acquire. Anybody can have the Spirit or the ghost. Nowhere in the Bible does it say that another man has to qualify you and give you the ghost or the Spirit. Jesus gave up the ghost for you to acquire. And, of course, I believe I have the Spirit. So if I believe I have the Spirit, I can talk. So, if Jesus died and gave up the ghost for you to acquire, how do you acquire the Spirit or the ghost? Romans 10.9 says, If you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Meaning, you will also acquire the ghost or the spirit. In case some of you don't know what it means to be saved, being saved means that you are entering God's heaven. And when I say God, I mean God the Father. You are entering his heaven through the name of his son, Jesus. John 3, 5, Jesus said, I say unto you, except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. Kingdom of God means heaven. That which is born of flesh is flesh, and that which is, is born of spirit is spirit. Spirit means Jesus. And if you believe in Jesus, then you should believe the Father, and vice versa. This is why Jesus is so important, because you're not getting into heaven but through Jesus. And a lot of people will cut the Bible from the Old Testament to the New Testament. And the New Testament is about Jesus. John 14, 6. This is Jesus saying, No man cometh unto the Father but by me. And obviously the Father is in heaven right now. If ye had known me, ye should have known my Father also. Acts 2, 38. Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. So anyone can acquire the Holy Spirit without another man saying that he's qualified or he's deemed worthy. If you confess with your mouth, you will acquire the Holy Spirit. And of course, if you get baptized, believing in Jesus with all your heart and confessing it out of your mouth comes before the baptism. And after believing with all your heart, then thou mayest be baptized. Acts 8.37, where the eunuch asks Philip, What doeth hinder me to be baptized? So Philip answered and said, If thou believest with all thine heart, thou mayest. Then they went down into the water where Philip baptized him. And from my own experience, I believed in Jesus way early in my life, probably at, at around the age of 10. I don't know why I believed it. Probably because I went to the church and somehow I just believed it. But when I picked up the book at the age of 35 and I read it, it hit me like a ton of bricks. I was teary-eyed many times as I was reading it. I felt the Spirit. I was saved. And I wasn't baptized until years after. And think about all the Christians you know and the family members in your family. Were they baptized the way the Bible describes? as in being dunked fully underwater? Probably not. I'm, I'm going to bet that 20% of Christians 
have been baptized the way the Bible describes. So does that mean 80% of Christians are not getting into heaven? No, of course not. I believe they are going to get into heaven. As long as you believe with all your heart in Jesus. In my opinion, baptizing the way the Bible describes is following God's instructions to the T. And then think about how many Christians and people in your family have literally sat down and read the Bible. I'm assuming only 20% have. Sure, Christians read a verse here, a verse there, they hear it on Sunday here, they hear it on Sunday there. But how many of them have picked up the Bible and studied it? Not many. So does that mean they're not getting into heaven? No, they are getting into heaven. It just means they're not following God's instructions to the T. Because God wants you to study this every single day. And we see in the Revelation that Jesus' reward is with Him. And you will get your reward once you're in heaven. So people that do not follow the instructions to the T may not be rewarded as people that do follow the instructions to the T. But it doesn't mean you're not getting into heaven. You just may not have a great reward in heaven. And think about all the churches that do the sprinkling of the water. I know my Christian Orthodox Church did that. I believe the Catholic churches do that, and I believe a lot of other churches do that. But that's not how the Bible describes a true baptism. Sprinkling of water is not submersing yourself under water. So does that mean all those people that got sprinkled and believe in Jesus are not getting into heaven? Of course not. I believe they are getting into heaven. They just didn't do the baptism the way the Bible describes to the T. And getting sprinkled with water at an infant age does not have you saying with all of your heart, confessing with your mouth that you believe in Jesus because you're too young to confess it. And in some cases, you're too young to even talk. And should you eventually get baptized? Yes, because we have another scripture that says, Mark 16, 16, whoever believes and is baptized will be saved. So, I'm not saying don't get baptized. I'm saying I was saved before I was baptized and you could be too. Okay, so now that you understand that Jesus died, gave up the ghost, gave up the spirit for you to acquire, and you have now confessed that you believe with all your heart, and you then get baptized, you have now acquired the spirit. The next verse I want to point out is Matthew 16, 24. Then said Jesus unto his disciples, If any man will come after me, that means you and that means me. Let him deny himself, which means let me put all of my vanities aside and deny myself all of these vanities and take up his cross and follow me. So Jesus is saying, deny yourself, pick up the cross and follow him. So I basically interpret this as Jesus telling me, I don't need anybody to tell me that I can follow him or not. I can follow him based on what he said. He's telling me to follow him. And I don't need any man or any school to tell me that I can follow him. And the last verse I would like to point out is 2 Timothy 2.15, where it says, Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth, needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. So I interpret this as God will see if I'm approved to preach the Bible. And I needeth not to be ashamed because I am rightly dividing the word of truth. So I don't need another man or an institution or my mother or my father to tell me to preach the Bible or allow me to preach the Bible. God will tell me. I will feel it 
through His Son. So in conclusion, I look forward to preaching the Bible to you. There are hundreds of videos coming. And through those videos, I will show you that I feel I am qualified. And I hope that you see that I'm qualified and that you learn something. And I also want to point out that this movie, it's a four disc set. It's called The Bible. Um, it's currently on Amazon because I know a lot of people don't have DVD players anymore, but I know it's on Amazon. It's not on Netflix and I don't know what other platform it's on. This video is excellent. It's four discs, okay? It goes from the beginning of Genesis to about to, to the end of um, Je to Jesus' death. This video will help you learn the Bible piece by piece. So I cannot stress this movie enough as you are reading the Bible and as you are listening to my preaches. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, I thank you for giving me health today and allowing me to preach the Bible. This I hope my message did not contain any mistakes, and if I learn that I made a mistake, I will correct it in the next video. But at this moment in time, I believe I am correct and my delivery is sound. Amen.